so yeah, so be careful with uh, uh, with anybody who uh, is claiming stuff and they're using like the default stuff. However, uh, uh, the, one of the things that's really uh, um, good for you uh, when you're starting off is by all means use the default stuff. Get a handle on how everything comes together and uh, feel free to use the marketplace free stuff. No problem. Dissect it. Figure out how it works and build your own thing. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. So for the most part, we saw that all of this was built in, so there was nothing to, to make. Uh, I'm going to create, actually, you know what? I'm going to go into this one, uh, into a new folder over here. So I'm going to go, uh, wait, content, third person. So I'm going to add a new folder. Uh, and we're going to call this test stuff. And in test stuff, I'm going to create a new folder called just Blueprints. Blueprints, best way I can describe it is, think of it as a box um, that has all kinds of stuff put into it uh, that allows you to... So, so let's say that you, you want to make a blueprint for a table. And you just put a mesh in there that is a table. Technically, it's a very bad blueprint because it's just a table mesh and that's it. But if you wanted to, you could say, wait, it's not just a table. We can now put a variable on it and we can make it so that it's a four legged table, one legged table. Uh, you know, uh, we have on the corners. Is it in the middle? Uh, is it a, just a square table, a rectangle, a sphere? And then uh, a sphere, a circle, I meant. Um, although that would be very uh, bizarre if that ever. Yeah. Anyways, so you're making a, um, a blueprint for a table. And all of the things that make a table what it is become variables and such. And when you're changing it in the editor, uh, change, or making your choices, it will dynamically change and it'll be the table that you want. So think of it that way. Uh, whenever you're making a blueprint, you're making basically this kind of like thing where it's uh, you're dumping a whole bunch of stuff in. And then that as a whole will be duplicated into the world. And uh, you will be able to make changes to the individual uh, uh, objects that you're placing everywhere everywhere so let's just start with one so we're gonna go over here and go uh, we're gonna add a blueprint it's going to be an actor an actor in unreal means it's an object that exists in the scene think of it like in um, unfortunately the actor uh, movie scene type scenario falls apart because the table is an actor the wall is an actor. Every, everything's an actor, <laughs> despite its name. Um, so you have to start thinking of how many of these objects are live. Uh, so that's what an actor is. Uh, and we have usually an actor count. And that's always been a thing in every game that I've ever worked in. So you want to avoid hitting like 2,000 actors live on at, at any moment. Like you're, you're walking around. It's got to deal with 2,000 things live. Like, okay, there's this little... There's a... a, a a space chucks cup on the floor that's an actor you've got this uh character that you can talk to that's that is a very complex actor and so on so i'm just going to start with an actor which is uh according to unreal is an object that can be placed or spawned in the world like what i just said so it's fine uh and we're going to call this guy uh, some sort of trigger trigger thing and normally here's this is a good habit to have you really would need to get into this habit um, of either putting a prefix or an affix. In this case, I'm going to do um, an affix. Wait, is it an affix? Anyway, it's at the end. So I'm going to put BP at the end to signify that it is, uh, to, to signal that it is a blueprint. So it's a trigger thing blueprint. Oh. There we go. So we now have this object, and I'm going to go in here. Of course, you can't see that. And it's going to create this whole thing that at first you're going to be like, oh my god, it's nothing but more windows and more things. Um, uh, but it's think of it just like it's just another scene, like what we have here, uh, but just there's nothing in it. It's just an empty, an empty scene, and then we're in the viewport, so we can actually see what what this box is that we're creating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a trigger or a collision box. Box collision. There we go. So I just typed it. One of the nice things about Unreal, seriously, is they always have these uh, like search bars 
So whenever you want to create something or change something, you just start typing the thing in here and it'll go and find you everything that's related to that. It's really easy for that. It's good for that. So let's, uh, it's created a collision box and we're going to call this uh, trigger. And it's going to create this, uh, this, uh, this collision box, which is an invisible object that has um, things that come with it for triggers, uh, for collision. It's like, it could be something that is a wall, like you can't pass through it. Or, in our case, what we want to do with this collision wall is that it won't block anybody, but it'll detect if you try to pass through it. And it will send out something called an event. So, there are two ways of thinking uh, about a, a game uh, when, you're, when you're thinking about how it decides things. There is one which is the live one, like uh, we call that on tick. On tick is a four letter word in, in Unreal in just about any engine. Basically it's saying it's always thinking about this. So if you put a, an on tick check, it means it's constantly going to be checking to see if you're inside or not. And that's not good. You don't want to have things that are constantly checking. What you want to do is the other school of thought, which is events. So uh, Unreal has, for every type of object that you place in the world, there's usually an event that goes with it. So for example, there could be an event that's called, that, that, uh, that gets triggered when you create the object or uh, when you pass through it or you hit it. These are all events that can then signal to the game, now I need to do something. So in the case of this, this little trigger here, I'm going to make it do something when, I, uh, when, it pass, when you pass through it. So if I go into the event graph, look at that. Here's our four letter word, event tick. We don't want to touch this, and even I think Unreal will warn you. This node is, is disabled, it will not be called. Drag off pins. And, yeah, it's basically saying we don't like using this, but if you really needed to, you could do like something crazy, like something, or rather, it's not crazy, but it's just going to start printing uh, hello. We're going to, you know what, I'm going to just move this out of the way, and I'm going to put this over here just to show you. So I've I've created that uh, that trigger blueprint, and what we saw in the all we had was that little cube, and but we did put something on the event tick. So now if I play the game, it constantly keeps printing hello, and that that is goodbye. We we do not want to have that. Uh, so we're gonna uh, just grab this thing, go delete. Uh, so now what we can do is uh, select this, and right click, and you can you can create add an event. So we, these are all the events that it can have. So the collision uh, on begin overlap. So it's going to have a whole bunch of stuff. Just ignore it for the, for the moment. And we're just going to drag this out and type print. And we're going to say hello, a proper hello. And uh, maybe a color that everybody can see. Hey, this is the space boat stuff, so purple it is. So now if I press play, We've got our little window here. Actually, we're not going to see the, the hello very easily. So uh, I think I put it right behind him. So there you go. Now it says hello. Every time I pass through it, it will say hello. Okay, so that right there is a way of making, uh, it's very, it was very simple. I just created like a little collision thing for when you, whenever you walk into it and it just triggers the hello thing. Congratulations, we have our first bit of game code. You know, something to celebrate. Uh, but um, now we're going to go more into detail uh, as to what's going on here and what we can do with this. Uh, so, for example, uh, maybe one of the first things we need to do is actually put something here so we can see where it is. Uh, uh, so maybe I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go into the viewport of the object and I'm going to add a sphere we were talking about sphere tables before here we go so I'm gonna put a sphere here and I'm gonna check this spheres collision so I have the object selected I'm gonna go into the list here and I'm gonna say even though I can I can see where the physics is and I'm gonna go into collision and just typing collision and it's going to tell me, related to this sphere, what's going on with collision. And let's see, what do we have here? Generate overlap events. Uh, we don't need to overlap on the sphere. We only want those overlap events on the trigger that we put on the ground. Uh, can characters step on it? No, we don't want it. We want to pass through it. Imagine this was like just an energy ball, and we just want to pick it up or something. 
and then over here we're going to go no collision. So we've basically turned off all collision on it. Uh, can it affect navigation? Don't worry about these things. Just make sure, for the most part, everything is off. We don't. We this little sphere just needs to be off. And I'm going to put it up a little bit here and maybe change it. So like what we were saying is, uh, let's see, uh, what does it look like? I'm just moving this out of the way, so we can see that it that's that's our little sphere. It's floating up in the air. And the position of it is not exactly at the zero. So I'm gonna get rid of my, my little thing here and go, what is my position? So here I have, inf I always have information on the details pane. Um, like for example, it's location relative to the blueprint. Uh, so it's gonna say minus 12, minus 13 and 105. So 105 is probably its height. These two need to be zero. There we go, it's centered now. It's centered and it's uh, up about a meter. So we're gonna make it exactly one meter high. All right, so we've uh, we're gonna compile that so it can it can check our our little script here and see if it's working. We're gonna move this out of the way, and now I'm gonna press play. So now we have this sphere floating up in the air, and when we get close to it, it goes hello. So so that's cool. This could be a power up. This could be anything we want it to be. Uh, okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is. Uh, for this test stuff, like this little ball, it doesn't really seem like a power ball. So what we need to do is maybe create a material for it. So in the test stuff, I'm going to create a new uh, uh, folder. This is going to be called materials. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go create a new material. And this is going to be called glow ball underscore MAT for matte material. So now I'm just going to double click it and it's opened on the other screen. So now we have a material that we're working on and we're going to ignore this materials uh, like we don't want it to be like an actual what they call a physically based rendered object. So what we want to do is say uh, it is additive. Okay, so what is all this stuff in the material section of this material that we're doing? Um, think of it as you you have these. I won't go too much into shaders because that's a whole subject on its own. Uh, there's different things that you can have like the materials for. So, for example, you could have a post process effect, meaning once your GPU is finished drawing a picture or a frame, it will do something to the screen. Uh, that's a shader. Um, it could be for the UI, it could be a lot of things. For the most part, you're always going to be working on the surface of the object. Uh, and then for the blend mode, uh, that's the one I was looking for, there's all kinds of different kinds of material. So for example, there's opaque, so it's a solid object. Um, think of translucent as a, an object that is transparent in some way, uh, but it's transparent so that it's neither it's not a binary transparent, like masked is. Masked is translucent, but only in a binary way. It means that each pixel will either be on or off. And that's the, one of the best transparencies, though, believe it or not. Uh, when you have a uh, translucent, it means it could be 50% transparent, in which case you're going to see something behind it at 50%, right? Um, and then you have other ones like additive. Um, I won't go too much into these, but um, for now, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to stick to opaque because that's the standard one. And normally I would use an additive one, but I won't go too much into the math behind the material. We're going to just stick to opaque. And all we're going to do is we're going to make a gray object um, uh, glow uh, with a little, uh, I don't know, some sort of sine wave. So it just glows. So, uh, so our object is kind of like a... Uh, I think I've seen it in some games uh, where they kind of look like a solid object and then they start glowing. So, so let's let's uh, just go through the glow ball material, uh, what it's looking for for information. So uh, I'm going to use some hotkeys. Like if I press three, for example, and then click, I can create a color. Three is because there are three channels. If I press one and then click, 
it'll just create a single channel uh, uh, value, like a you know what we call a constant, uh, whatever number we want. <laughs>